Man, toast it up. Eight o'clock show. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. King of the North in the building. Look, man, look. So today, continuing our coverage of future Metro Boomin and Drake. So, Metro Boomin has came out, has came out, came out and said a couple of different things about the whole issue with Drake. And we're going to get into this. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get into this. Before I do that, you know I got to get my legendary spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, work on your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy, single ladies. Put one in the chat. Yeah, I see y'all. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones that just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation... Links on the screen. Cash app is in the description. They called me the hidden gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over, over 12,000 subscribers, 300 to be exact. And yeah, let me know where you're from. Thank y'all for being here with me. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all like my wah, 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 wah. wah, 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 wah. <laughs> yeah, that shit is so funny. <laughs> It's so funny. It's so funny. But look, we're going to get into this clip. Be back to discuss. You know what it is. All right, so let's get it, man. You know what it is. <laughs> so, family and friends, yesterday I told you guys about how the producer of Kendrick's diss record, Not Like Us, CJ Mustard, had trolled Drake during his set at Tyler the Creator's Festival, Camp Flogna. And now it seems like the producer of the first record that kicked off this battle, Metro Boomin, also has some words for Drake. And he brought along his good friend Future to speak on the whole beef in a new interview. And aside from Future having some hilarious comments, they both had some interesting takes on the whole thing, especially considering the fact that they were the originators of this entire issue, if you really break it down. And look, um, I don't know if they were the originators of the whole entire thing. Um, I don't think they were. I think that if you mean like the set off this year, maybe. But for me, the the originator obviously was Kendrick and Drake. And even it's Cole in some sense. But I don't think they, they were the originators. But let's keep it going. If you look at every single person who was involved in this 20v1, all the effort that they brought to the table, whether it was Kendrick, The Weeknd, Rick Ross, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Pute. Why do they have uh, Kevin Samuels in there? <laughs> why did it, why was Kevin Samuels, was he in that video? He might have been in the video. I don't know. Let me run it back a little bit. Down. And Loki, if you look at every single person who was involved in this 20v1, all the effort that they brought to the table, whether it was Kendrick, The Weeknd, Rick Ross, ASAP Rocky, Drake, Future, whoever, while Metro Boomin never picked up a microphone and actually rapped anything against Drake, aside from Kendrick, he kind of had the funniest disses towards Drake out of anyone who participated in this entire thing. And we're going to break down the entire beef between Drake and Metro. We're going to break down everything Future and Metro Boomin said in this interview, why people thought that they had beef with Drake to begin with, if they've resolved their issues, what they think about Kendrick Lamar, and a lot more. So let's jump into it. There's a. Yeah, I want to. <clears throat> so. Here's the thing. I want to say this about uh, the whole thing with between uh, Drake and everybody, right? You have asked yourself, you have asked yourself, why is everybody beefing with Drake? Like, I know people always saying, oh, it's because he he's on top, he's successful and all this stuff. I don't, I don't buy that. I don't buy that. Because Jay was on, Jay was on top. Everybody wasn't beefing with Jay. There had some people who had problems with him, but everybody wasn't beefing with him. You know what I'm saying? So I'm asking, like, why is everybody beefing with him and why is everybody staying away from him? Like, if everybody wasn't beefing with him, they say, oh, it was a 20v1. 
who really jumped Drake, to be honest with you? Rick Ross had a song, and then they're saying Future and Metro, but Future's saying he wasn't dissing Drake. So who was really jumping Drake? It was just Kendrick who did a diss song. So it's, a, it's 20, 20 versus one. Who? The Weeknd? The Weeknd's not a rapper. Then you had ASAP Rocky, but that didn't happen until after. So I, I'm just trying to figure out why is everybody saying, like, do you ever ask yourself, <clears throat> well, maybe it's him. Maybe it ain't everybody else. Because why is there, like, he's beefing with producers, beat makers. He's beefing with, with uh, people like Serena Williams, and her husband. Like, what, what, why is he beefing with everybody? A lot of little nuggets in both of their disses that if it wasn't for these breakdowns and salute to, you know, guys like this, Rapaholics, because I think they directly get it. So Future and Metro Boomin were awarded with GQ Men of the Year. And because of that, they did a sit down interview with GQ. Now, as far as what being Men of the Year entails, I'm not too sure. Someone can let me know in the comments. I mean, low key, Future had a good year, man. He had a really good year. He released two albums. He released three albums. Uh, two, uh, two with Metro in his own album. And all of them were successful. He had a really good year this year. He had a really good year, and a lot of people ain't talking about it. That'd be great, I guess. I'm going to try to submit myself for nomination next year. But aside from Future and Metro Boomin, Pharrell Williams was also awarded by GQ this year for creative man of the year or something like that and they asked him about drake too because they've had their own little issue that's involved pusha t if you guys didn't know pharrell signed pusha t way back in the day and produced a lot of his early work with his brother no malice as the clips pharrell also had some interesting things to say about drake i did a whole breakdown of their back and forth why they have issues and what pharrell had to say about drake so i'll leave that in the description of this video but as far as future and metro Boomin, let's start with metro because he was the one who really had issues with drake and he admits that in this interview as he's asked about all the Drake disses on his two albums with Future. Obviously a little backstory if you guys didn't know, Future and Metro Boomin released two albums titled We Don't Trust You and We Still Don't Trust You. Metro's producer tag, like the drop that you hear when he produces a beat, is Future saying if young Metro don't trust you I'ma hit you with a firearm. So it was only right that they called Yeah, that's, I mean, and that's, that's my whole thing. My whole thing is, how did they get to this point? And I'm hoping that Metro kind of explains explain that because from what I was reading on on on, uh, on X, he basically was saying there was some things that happened that he can't even speak on because he was basically involved too. So he said, "You know what happened, and I can't say nothing about it because we both is involved." So I don't know what happened, but there's something deeper that he knows and Drake knows and Drake knows that he can't really say nothing about it but I just have to wonder what is it like like what is it their collaborative projects we still don't trust you and we don't trust you but those projects featured verses from Kendrick Lamar the weekend and ASAP Rocky who were all throwing subliminal shots at Drake well Kendrick and Rocky's disses weren't so subliminal he also had features from Rick Ross on that album who later went on to beef Drake and jump into this whole 20v1 so a lot of people associated these two albums as being the root cause or the catalyst of this entire back and forth and when Metro's asked about it he says me and Drake we had a personal issue and for the record not over no girl or nothing silly like that it was a personal issue that really hurt me and disappointed me. But if you take all the rap entertainment. That's what I'm saying. You said not over no girl, but it was a personal issue that hurt you and disappointed you. I want y'all to leave in the comments. What do y'all think the personal issue could be? Because if this man is saying y'all had a personal issue and it really hurt him. He said it really hurt him. It really hurt him. So if it ain't about no girl, then what is it? What happened? Because if it's something personal like that, I, and it ain't, no, it ain't over no woman, I, I mean, what can it be? What can it be? What can it be? Out of it, it's like, have you ever been real cool with somebody and y'all fell out over something? It happens every day. It's just regular stuff. This just happened to have an audience. And to this day, it's still unknown what started it all, but it was a big domino effect of Metro Boomin 
having an issue with Drake. We first kind of got wind of this back in 2022 when Drake was supposed to feature on Metro Boomin's album Heroes and Villains, but Metro purposely left Drake's verse off of the project saying that it didn't really fit the overall song, the song was kind of finished, and Metro liked it the way it was without Drake. Many people then believe that Drake purposely leaked the version of the record with his verse on it. It was the song called Trance with Young Thug and Travis Scott. And after that record leaked, Metro Boomin leaked the original version of Knife Talk, which was a track he produced, the biggest track off Drake's album Certified Lover Boy, which was originally a soul. Solo 21 Savage song. So he leaked the version that just had 21 Savage on it, and people were confused like, why would you leak Drake's records to make him look bad to show the world that it was really 21 Savage song that he kind of made the whole song or he was the backbone of it. Then when the Grammys came around and Drake's album Her Loss and Metro's album Heroes and Villains were both nominated, Metro was tweeting a lot about how his album deserved the Grammy over Drake's. People thought this issue started over a girl. Metro kind of confirms here that it didn't, but again, we don't know the root cause, but you couple Metro's issues with Drake alongside Kendrick Lamar's drive to be the GOAT and whatever disdain he had towards Drake, and with that is the formula for the song like that. Your best work is a light pack, Prince outlived Mike Jack, F the big three is just big me. This yeah, the best verse is a light pack. We all know that that verse, that's, that bar was saying Daylight wrote uh, back to back. You know what I'm saying? We already know that. And, um... I'm I'm guessing he's 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 speeding us up to this point where that's where like that came in, but I think that the the reason why because they because for what I'm reading, Metro well um Future said in an interview he said that <laughs> <laughs> he said that. He didn't know that they were beefing, and he didn't. He had no idea. Even to this day, he had no idea. But wait a minute, future. If you heard the song before y'all put it out, didn't you hear the verse? It was on y'all album. So how do you not know that this guy is talking about Drake in in uh and 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 J Cole? How you not know this, future? I don't understand. It's how you know these dudes be capping and they be trolling. Come on, Future. You you was on the song and you heard the song before they put it out. And then there's another version of the song where Kanye West is on the song. And you're telling me that you didn't know that these dudes were beefing at all? It, you didn't know. You and, you and Drake ain't never discussed how him and Kendrick had a problem or issue. Never. Not one time. Not one time. Come on, bro. Come on. <laughs> Started all of these issues. You couple that with ASAP Rocky having a verse on the next project saying that Metro and Future should have got him on the first album and that he slept with Drake's baby mother. And then The weekend saying that he thanks God he never signed his life away to Drake's OVO sweatshop label. Plus the album titles Dean, We Don't Trust You and some subliminal disses from Future on the intro track to the first album. And all that led many fans to believe that these albums were the centerpiece to the collective objective of Operation Eliminate Drake. Oh, and couple that with the fact that Kanye... I mean, Drake be playing... Yo, Drake is so good, bro, at playing both sides. He is a master manipulator. I'm going to explain it. This is how you know Drake's a master manipulator, right? 21 Savage and Future don't like each other. At least that's what I'm hearing. They don't like each other. But somehow Drake does albums with both of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> Young Thug and Lil Wayne has issues, but somehow Drake does stuff with both of them. <laughs> like, bro, you know what I'm saying? This guy is, he he plays both sides of the fence. Nicki Minaj and I believe Lotto or one of those females who she beats with everybody. Nicki beats with everybody. Nicki Minaj and there you go. He's in the mix with that. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 and I'm sure there's other people too. I'm sure there's other people that don't mess with each other, but he's always the centerpiece. I don't know. And, and that's why it makes me think that maybe you're using him to become successful instead of him using them. But Or it could be both. But he's always the centerpiece. I don't know. 
I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. West did a remix to Like That, and he did an interview saying that everyone was very excited for the elimination of Drake. So the interviewer naturally asks if this was all a concocted plan trying to eliminate Drake. And that's another one. Kanye West and J. Cole had an issue. He worked with both of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, I'm telling you, bro. This dude is, this dude is a master manipulator. They said, Kanye's antics aside, when I asked Metro Boomin if he's formally rejecting the idea that this was all a detailed attack plan, he responds with a sarcastic, for sure, even though some rap fans still see him as some kind of diabolical chess master. He said, people really think we sat down for two years making two albums to be like, yo, F this dude, what kind of stuff is that? You really think we are going to spend that much time, effort, resources on just trying to get at somebody on an album, blowing budgets on two albums, going over budget? That's some serious hate. Neither one of us rock like that. And to be fair, Drake kind of fed into this narrative, making people believe that this was a concocted plan to eliminate him or to gather everyone who hates him onto two albums and make the central theme about not trusting him. I mean, he rapped on Family Matters. Future's issues made me sick to my stomach. We ain't never really been through it. Metro Boomin's an effing lame, so I know he had to be an influence. These people had a plan and they finally found a way to rope you into it. Two separate albums dissing. I just did the Kim to it. I skimmed through it. Basically saying he was unfazed by it all. My thing is like, no, you didn't. You didn't skim through it. <laughs> bro, you didn't skim through the album, bro. You didn't. You know what I'm saying? Just, just, just chill with that. Like, just chill with that. That's why I like Ransom so much. Ransom beef with Joe Buttons. Ransom basically said, bro, you hot. You, he, said, yeah, you, he said, you the issue with the computers. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? That's why he basically broke it down. Like, look, I can't even hate. You fired, bro. But I'm just a better rapper than you. I mean, that's when rap was, rap battles was different. But this guy here, man, this guy here, bro, it's just, it's just so weird to me how he tries to pretend to be this hard figure, man. And he's just really not. It's, it's hilarious to see. Hilarious to see. Hilarious. Well, he also had some bars for Metro Boomin on push-ups, rapping Metro shut up and make some drums. So basically he was saying that he didn't know that him and Future ever had an issue and it made him sick to his stomach. That was funny. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was funny, Metro. He got you on that. He got you with that bar. <laughs> Metro, Metro, shut your ass up. Make some drums, nigga. <laughs> that was funny. I ain't gonna lie. That was funny. To even think of the fact that they might be beefing. And he basically dissed Metro by saying, you're a lame and just stick to producing. Oh, and he also said that Metro slimed someone for their main squeeze. As in, like, he stole someone's girl. And that prompted Metro to go on an absolute rap. Ain't no way in the world you out here talking about somebody stealing somebody's girl, bro. Ain't no way you even fixed your mind. That's how you know how narcissistic this dude is. It's no way you fixed your mouth to say something like that. All the goofy you do. And you got a nerve to say that somebody stole somebody's girl when you literally died. You do that all the time. I guess it doesn't take away from people else, people doing it too, but still in all. <laughs> I'm Paige on Twitter, denying the allegations Drake threw at him while simultaneously clobbering on Drake in a hilarious series of like a dozen different tweets. And we're going to break his whole Twitter rant down, but he actually spoke on that Twitter rant in this interview saying, now I did have my moment online, which I do regret. I should have been stronger than that. That was out of character for me. But at a certain point, it's like, I don't rap, bro. So you're just going to crap on me on all of these songs. I'm not going to get in the booth. So I'm going to tweet at you. And I mean, in Drake's defense, it was fair that he did also go at Metro Boomin, considering the fact that Metro Boomin did host a party for all of these guys to just crap on Drake on these different records. Not a I, I, I don't, I don't, I disagree with that. I disagree. You know what I'm saying? I disagree. Unless these dudes knew Unless Metro said this, yo, we're dissing Drake on this album, then I disagree. It could be, it could have been that. Could have been that. And to be honest with you, that's probably what it was. I mean, it's probably what it was. But he said it did. He wasn't. He said it wasn't. So you can't say he, you, if the man said it wasn't, 
Not to say that people don't lie or tell the truth, but I'm saying if you don't like somebody, you're not going to lie about it. You're not going to cover it up because if you're covering up, you're lying, if you're lying about it. You're just not a good person. You're just lying, covering up. But if you lie, then obviously you don't really feel that way as much as you say you do. But if you don't like somebody, you're going to say, I don't like that person. That's going to be that. It ain't going to be no, oh, I, nah, I'm cool with him. Nah. And you must, you must really, really be insecure about something. Or you're afraid to say what, how you really feel. And you're lying twice. You know what I'm saying? Party, but a platform. Like, these two albums had so many disses towards Drake that ASAP Rocky literally said, like, yo, why didn't you guys call me for the first one? I've been ready to diss this guy. Like, I've had these bars stashed up in this notepad just, like, collecting dust, waiting for a beat to rap on to finally get at this guy. But I do agree with Metro. I don't think these albums were specifically crafted as Drake diss albums. Like, there was 42 different songs. So yeah, three or four of them had Drake disses on them, but another 39 of them didn't. And the whole We Don't Trust You title was... I'm looking for something was an ode to Metro's producer tag that Future created. I don't think it was like some subliminal caption of, yeah, we don't trust you, Drake. So here's a collection of some songs with all your friends dissing you. But as far as Metro dissing Drake, he most definitely did on Twitter. The night that Kendrick Lamar released Not Like Us, Metro's Twitter fingers were in full effect and he went ether mode on Drake's head top. He started it off by sharing a couple videos of Drake on Twitter. One of them was a video of a young Drake, probably in his acting days at a dinner with a bunch of white women where he's making fun of Toronto slang saying that sayings like man's like you are ignorant and it's funny because right after this beef and all these tweets that Metro put out Drake released the song Wagwan Delilah where he's rapping or singing in Toronto slang but Metro posted that video and a video of Drake saying the n-word with the hard r and captioning <laughs> yo oh man y'all gotta go to Metro Boomer's ex account man I don't know if he deleted all this stuff, but that video right there is hilarious. <laughs> Bruh. That's how you know. When he said that in that video, he I already I knew he is a pretender. He's a dangerous man. Drake is dangerous. He's a dangerous pretender. I'm telling y'all, when y'all when you deal with pretenders and you find out somebody's been pretending. It's very disturbing because you, you realize how it, it, it's just disturbing to see the level of, of uh, how would I say this, of gall that a person can have. And I'm telling you, he is a pretender. He's a pretender. I got an episode about, about the three faces of Drake. Make sure y'all go check that out. Both these videos with the hashtag colonizer. Again, this was the night that Kendrick released not like us, where he called Drake a colonizer of Atlanta Sound, the hometown where Metro Boomin grew up. So Metro is kind of trying to show here that before he was a rapper, he was saying that the slang from the hometown he grew up in was ignorant and highly offensively using the N-word in the worst way possible. Also hashtagging that video, quoting Kendrick Lamar saying, we don't want to hear you say the N-word no more. Then he addressed the fact that... On and that's the thing too, a lot of people got to understand about, about this guy. A lot of people give him a pass, and I think it's because, and I hate to say this, I got to be the one to say it. I think it's because he's he is a mixed brother. And I'll be honest with y'all, and, 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 and I know a lot of people might not like to hear this, but it's my opinion. Dark-skinned brothers get more heat than light-skinned brothers, or mixed brothers, I would say. Drake is a mixed brother. So people feel like they can give him a pass because he don't really understand what the struggle is. But then there's some people who don't give him a pass and they say, bro, you don't understand what the struggle is. So he's in this, he's in this weird space to me where he can get a pass for saying the most egregious things because he can play both sides. Now, I, I hate to I hate to be that guy, but you are you are, you you are half black, right? You half black. I believe that for some people, being half black is just enough for you to use race racial slur terms. But here's the here's the 
the craziest part to me. So what happens if you're half black and your family, your mother, your brother, your sister is white. And now you use the N word in front of them. What happens then? See, these are the questions I need to ask Drake if I have an interview with him. If I have an interview with Drake, I'll ask him that. But like, if when you use the word, when you use the word nigger, did, did I mean, and you said nick er, er, use the word er. How you think your mom felt and what did she really say to you? You know what I'm saying? But I think he gets a lot of passes all the time. And it's disturbing to see because he don't get his feet held to the fire when it comes to a bunch of different things, especially when it comes to racial, racial, uh, racial topics, he don't never really speak on. Drake never speaks on racial topics. I never seen him one time speak on a racial topic. Maybe he does that on purpose. Family Matters Drake rapped that the weekend songs only get played in homosexual clubs, clubs that have more pride, as Drake said. And Metro responded to someone tweeting out, "How does Drake know that they play the weekend at homosexual bars in the first place?" Metro said. <laughs> oh man <laughs> nigga said how does he know his his music get plays at homosexual bars anyway <laughs> that's true <laughs> you know what i'm saying but see again if that was if that was me that said that if i said that about somebody oh i'll get canceled but see it's drake nobody cares <laughs> Ah, oh, that was funny. Come on, you know how. Freaky ass guy. He also tweeted out an old clip of Drake acting, and in the clip, Drake is caught looking at homosexual pornography. Again, he was acting, but it's kind of- <laughs> <laughs> Yo, y'all get this dude to pass too much, man. <laughs> Oh my God, he's a secret buttocks fondler. Drake is a secret buttocks fondler. <laughs> Funny that he would choose that role. He also tweeted a picture of Drake weirdly fondling or hugging someone who's presumably his friend and a mirror selfie that- I just said the word. <laughs> oh my God, bro. This is crazy. Yo, bro, Metro went, went, yo, at Metro, you got to chill, bro. He went ham on this dude, bro. He went ham. <laughs> he used that old word. <laughs> Hard as a motherfucker. <laughs> Drake himself posted, and Metro said, this stuff is so easy because all I got to do is post stuff that you already put out. Hashtag zesty man. Then he emphasized Rick Ross's claims that Drake got liposuction by saying, I know a guy with liposcars is not trying to call me lame. He also posted a picture of Drake with nail polish saying, I know a guy pushing 40 and painting his nails. Bro, come on, bro. Did he really put this up? Bro. Oh, I want to listen. Everybody in the comments, right? How do y'all feel about a man wearing nail polish? Like, I'm talking about a straight man. I ain't talking about uh, a, 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 a man from, a, a, from, from the community, from that community. Not disrespecting nobody. I'm just asking. <clears throat> How do y'all feel about a straight man wearing nail polish? You know what I'm saying? Not clear nail polish. Don't get in the comments and say, well, there's guys who get acrylic on their nails and they, get, they put, they put, in the no, no. There's guys that get pedicures and manicures. Yeah, that's, that's called hygiene. You can do that, but to put Hello Kitty and nail polish on your nails, how y'all feel about that? You know what I'm saying? Should, 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 a, should a straight man be doing that? And I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear the whole, well, if you straight, it shouldn't matter. It should matter. That's like saying if you're straight, you, you, holding the, you can hold a dildo on your head and be like, yeah, I'm straight, though. That's how I look at it. Maybe I'm wrong. Is not trying to call me lame. Hashtag identity crisis. He then quoted more Kendrick lyrics when Kendrick rapped, when I see you stand by sexy red, I believe you see two bad females, and posted a picture of Drake 
cuddling with Sexy Red. He also posted the pictures of Drake in blackface that Pusha T used as the album cover to the story of Adidon and said, I still can't believe these pictures are even real. It all makes sense now. Hashtag colonizer. And again, this was all in response to Drake saying that Metro got cheated on by his girlfriend when he rapped on Family Matters saying that Metro's guy slimed him for his main squeeze. Metro tweeted out, the bar about me shutting up and making drums was laughable, so I let it slide. But what we're not going to do is spread lies and have my loved ones involved. Nobody ever slept. Bro, you crash out. I don't know. I'm going to crash out too. You crash out over a dude saying somebody slept with your girl. I probably would have crashed out too. I don't like stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But... Drake is, Drake is a manipulator, so he can know he can easily get under your skin. It's crazy. With my girl, we grew up together. She's a real woman and not even in the industry, but I guess hashtag you wouldn't know nothing about that. He also called out Drake for sending out a cease and desist letter to try and stop the song Like That from playing on the radio. And Metro said, I'm lame, but the first week after Like That, you tried to block it at radio. I've been sitting on this email for a month now, but I was just sparing you. Oh, you ain't like that record? Yo, yo, low-key Metro got him. Metro's the reason why Drake's out of here. <laughs> Metro! Metro's the reason why, man. Forget Kendrick, it's Metro. He did it. <laughs> oh, man, this is crazy. <laughs> Damn. Damn, Drake. Bro, let me look at this. Can you see that? Can we see that? Damn. <laughs> Yo. Yo, that's crazy. Yo, I never seen nothing like this. A person who who is so upset about a diss song, you try to get it blocked. <laughs> He continued tweeting, now go make another song telling more lies because we both know you can't tell everyone why I don't mess with you. That wouldn't be a good look either for you, so I'm going to spare both of us with that. Then he pulled quite possibly the most hilarious move in this entire beef where he really did shut up and make some drums. He cooked up this beat where he sampled someone singing BBL Drizzy with these soulful vocals. He posted the beat on Twitter and said, best verse over this gets a free beat. Just upload your song and hashtag BBL Drizzy beat giveaway. And this caused everyone to rap over this beat, including Drake himself, who spit a verse on it on the sexy red song, You My Everything, where he kind of flipped it to make. Yo, that's crazy. So he said, all right, I'm going to shut up and make some drums. He went and made a beat out of the diss that someone made to BBL Drizzy because we all know BBL Drizzy came from Rick Ross. So BBL Drizzy, BBL Drizzy, BBL Drizzy. It was an AI version, Motown. Look that up. It's actually pretty fire. You know what I'm saying? And he took that and made a beat out of it. And then people rapped over it. And then Drake rapped over it. <laughs> and try to say that. Well, I'm the one that's providing the BBLs. <laughs> Bro, you can't make it. It seemed like it wasn't him actually getting surgery. But instead, he was buying so many women BBLs that they started calling him BBL Drizzy. And it seemed like Drake really did like this beat. Because when Metro released it, he left a comment on an Instagram post saying, Did you just chef up a beat about my butt? Yeah, as far as where Metro and Drake's issue stem from, we don't... Wait, what? What? It's about your butt. I don't... The, the BBL... Is Brazilian butt lift. <laughs> I'm trying to think with the hell BBL... I know BBO, I know it was Brazilian something. It's a Brazilian butt lift. So Oh man, this is this is this is interesting. <laughs> BBL. I don't really get much clarity on that. And it's weird because they did collaborate quite frequently in the past. Metro Boomin executive produced Drake's collab tape with Future, What a Time to Be Alive. He even had production credits on 21 Savage and Drake's album, Her Loss, which came out around the time that all these issues started. And that was that same album that Metro had production credits on that he was saying 
didn't deserve the Grammy over his own album. But Metro does say he regrets this whole Twitter spree, even though I don't regret seeing it. It was hilarious. That dance right there, bro. That dance right there. I think he think he's uh he's skiing. You know what I'm saying? I think he I think because you know these rich kids. I think he think he's skiing because he probably went skiing. So he's like, that's the dance. Hey, ski. Hey, my dance, my dance. That's my dance. Look at that dance, man. We gotta watch that. It was that same album that Metro had production credits on that he was saying didn't deserve the Grammy over his own album. But Metro does say he regrets this whole Twitter spree, even though I don't regret seeing it. It was hilarious. And he says that the albums were not intended to be Drake diss albums. They just so happened to feature multiple artists who were dissing Drake. But let me know in the comments if you guys think Metro Boomin knew what he was doing and he was deliberately crafting these albums to be Drake diss albums. As far as future, academics had alleged that before Kendrick recorded his Like That verse, None of this was intended to be a Drake diss, and he didn't even know that Kendrick would come and say F the Big Three is just Big Me, or diss Drake to any capacity on his own album. He says Future didn't know that there'd be any Drake disses on it, and over the last few weeks there's been a lot of talk about Drake and Future possibly reconciling their differences. When Young Thug was still incarcerated, he tweeted out tagging Drake, Metro Boomin, and Future saying that we need to patch things up and get back together, the world needs music with all of us together. Future actually retweeted that tweet, making people think that he was implying that he agreed with what Young Thug was saying in that they all needed to patch things up. Then Elliot Wilson reported that Drake and Future actually got on the phone and patched up their differences, but then academics said that that- Oh no, not Elliot Wilson again. <laughs> Elliot Wilson, oh no. He think he has the right scoop, Elliot Wilson. Always telling people something and it's not true. Smiling and doing it too. <laughs> <laughs> Dickhead. phone call never happened and it was basically a battle of who was the more credible journalist but again academics did say that future did not know that kendrick would be dissing drake on his own record like that and again it's important to note that throughout all these disses drake went at multiple different rappers and metro boomin but the whole time he said his issues with future made him sick to his stomach because he never knew that they existed in the first place however Drake being the calculated sneak disser that he is, he threw some subliminals at Future on his push-ups record when he started the song off by saying, I can never be no one's number one fan. The first number one you had, I had to put it in your hand. And this was vague enough to not be considered a full-on diss at Future, but if you played close enough attention, then you knew that on the intro track to Future and Metro Boomin's album, We Don't Trust You, Future rapped, you were my number one fan. Now you're pillow talking, acting like a fed. So Drake kind of responded to that by saying, I can never be no one. Yeah, so that's what I don't understand how Future don't think that him and Drake were. I think Future just saying all this stuff because he want to be elusive. Elusive Future. That's what he want to be. He want to be Mr. Elusive. That's why he's saying all this. He don't want nobody to know. You know what I'm saying? Got the dark shades on. You know what I'm saying? Sensational. That's what he want to do. You know what I'm saying? Be elusive. His number one fan, your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. But that could have also been interpreted as disses towards either ASAP Rocky, Rick Ross, or The Weeknd because The Weeknd and ASAP Rocky's first hits were Drake records and Rick Ross's biggest hits were Drake records. So again, that's definitely not true. <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe your boy ASAP Rocky, but The Weeknd first hit was not. His first major hit was not with Drake. You know what I'm saying? It, he had a, 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 a song with Drake, but his first major hit was not with Drake. That's 100% not true. You know what I'm saying? That's not true. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't believe so. You know what I'm saying? So let's keep it going. He kind of made it big enough where he can come back and patch things up with Future and pretend like there was no dissing back and forth between them in the first place. But again, Future spoke on all this in this new interview, and he said some pretty funny things. The interviewer started off by saying, Future, it's worth noting, has never overtly dissed Drake, although this hasn't stopped fans from reading implications into certain lines from the two We Don't Trust You albums. When I asked him in Miami about his perspective on the beef, it seems like he's about to give one of his patented, evasive interview maneuvers. There was a beef, Future asks, impishly smirking as he stands up to roll another joint. I didn't even know there was a beef. 
I didn't even know they had nothing going on. I ain't never been participated in rap battles, man. And again, it does add validity to what Academics was saying in that Future never knew to begin with that Kendrick would go on his record and diss Drake. The interviewer continues by saying the implication behind distinguishing beefs and battles is clear. Beef is like Biggie once rapped when an issue has real street consequences. After a few moments though, Future steps back and poses a question back to me. Why should he care about the beef when no one involved seemed to care about him? And I mean, yeah, again, with all this talk about the big three, it's funny that only Drake and J. Cole seemed to take offense and actually release diss records of their own. Everyone else was kind of just throwing attacks at Drake, and even Drake himself didn't really drag Future into this beef, except for a couple vague sneak disses and saying that the thought of him beefing with Future makes him sick to his stomach. See what I mean? How people do this? They, they, people do it blindly, too. And they don't even realize they do it. He literally said, he literally just said, <laughs> Drake didn't diss Future, besides <laughs> the dissing Future. It's like everybody gives Drake a pass and they don't know. Some people don't even realize they did they do it. He literally just said that. I'm telling y'all, everybody does this with Drake. Everybody does it. It's so crazy to me. I don't understand how, but it's crazy. So, yeah, rightfully so. Future feels like while this beef might have originated on his own record, no one involved ever cared to even mention Future after that record was released. And with all Future's accomplishments, with him releasing three number one albums this year back to back, and a decade long career of dropping hit after hit, it's only right that he feels like he's warranted being part of that big three as well. So Future kind of trolled the interviewer by saying, Kendrick said big three on my song. I'm supposed to be the one that gets mad. I'm still confused about that. Nobody cares what I think, Future continues breaking into a laugh. That's what was so- I don't-, I don't... Again, that goes back to the other video. I don't understand how he going to say that. <laughs> I mean, I believe now, because I, I will take Cole out and put Future in there. I ain't going to lie to you. I will take Cole out and put Future in that big three conversation. And it's not because I like Future music better than Cole. I just think that he's more of a well-rounded artist at this point than Cole is. Kill me in the comments. I don't care. Cole raps better than Future, but overall, Future is just a more well-rounded artist than him. You know what I'm saying? That's just my opinion. If we're talking like, because you have to put Future in the hip-hop category, right? He's a, He is a rapper, right? You know what I'm saying? So. Wrapped up about all this stuff. To the point where I'm so player that I didn't even say anything to the public about how I feel about it. Like, why is everyone mad when he was talking about me on, don't throw too on my song? So y'all just gonna forget about me. Like I'm not part of this big three. I'm nobody on my own song. If I didn't get mad, nobody should have gotten mad. If I would have really been mad about it and I made something out of it, then somebody else could be like, oh, I can make something about this. And that's what's so funny about Future, you know, while he doesn't really do interviews often, while he doesn't really speak much, while he, like he says, does not really participate in rap battles to any capacity, he's still paying close attention. He still recognizes the accomplishments that he's had and the spot he's warranted in the top tier position of hip hop artists of his generation. And he flips the whole thing like everyone's mad about this big three, like they should belong in the big three, but he's saying F the big three on my own song. And if I'm not getting mad about it and I'm part of that big three, then why should anyone else get mad about it? Great way to troll the situation while simultaneously weaving your way out of any issues with any artists involved. And as for if he's cool. I, and I don't think that he even understands the whole big three thing. Uh, maybe he thinks he is one of the big three. I mean, I I would say he could be, like I said, but maybe he maybe that's what he believes. But maybe that's the reason why he didn't know because maybe he didn't hear first person shooter, which I don't understand how he couldn't have. Come on now, come on now. Or not with any artists involved. The interviewer asked him, and Future shrugged by saying, "Yeah, who am I not cool with?" because I ain't got nothing to be mad about. Find something I should be mad at them about, then I guess I'll get mad. The interviewer continued by saying, it's as elliptical as I expected Future to be about this, but it's also a very good point. Of all the enemies Drake reserved bars for across his handful of diss songs, his most notable mention of Future is about how the idea of beefing with him is nauseating, before shifting blame on Metro Boomin for his involvement. And while Drake recently unfollowed a number of high-profile accounts on his Instagram account, including those of LeBron James and DeMar DeRozan, 
both of whom were at Kendrick's pop-out concert this past Juneteenth. He still follows Future on Instagram, even after everything. Future said, got no reason to be mad at nobody. I just told you, I'm chilling. Do I sound like I'm mad at anybody? And I think both Future and Metro did a good job of weaving their way out of any responsibility within this beef, emphasizing that this is a separate issue between Drake, Kendrick, The Weeknd, whoever Drake wants to go up against, but their whole album rollout wasn't revolving around Drake, which, again, it really wasn't. I mean, aside from a couple of songs which did take center stage, the albums were filled with songs that had nothing to do with Drake. The only other slightly... You just said earlier, bro, that, <laughs> that, that, that he invited a party on his albums to diss Drake. Maybe he was speaking from the perspective of how Drake feels. But then now you're saying that, no, it wasn't about Drake. The liminal thing I could think of was the fact that Future actually wrote the song Feel No Ways that was on Drake's 2016 album Views. And on this new album, We Still Don't Trust You, Future included the original version of that record that he then wrote for Drake. Otherwise, Future or Metro themselves didn't really have much to say about Drake on either of these albums. It was all just the features. And I still remember right before that second album dropped, Drake still hadn't dropped his first response to Kendrick's verse on Like That. And everyone thought this second Future and Metro album would feature tons more Drake disses. Everyone was building it up to be this massive moment of around two for Future, Metro, and all their alliances coming out to attack Drake. And then Drake would finally respond. They were building it up to be way bigger than it ended up being. It was just a couple mid disses from ASAP Rocky in the weekend. And I do hope you guys go back and revisit those albums without, you know, thinking of this entire beef and just listening to them with a fresh set of ears because there's a lot of amazing music on these 50 plus records that got highly slept on because of this whole beef that overshadowed them. Songs like We Still Don't Trust. I don't think they got highly slept on. I think the albums did pretty good. I don't know. Stu beat it, came to the party. Everyday Hustle, Fried, Running Out of Time, Out of My Hands, especially on that second album. Everyone really slept on that album because we were just waiting to see Kendrick and Drake go back and forth. And I mean, there's like 30 plus tracks on this album and there's a lot of bangers. So definitely go back and revisit it. We're going to be doing the best songs and albums of the year. And don't be surprised to see a lot of records from these projects be on those lists and i'm with future man after three number one albums this year if he's not mad at not being included in that big three and kendrick saying f the big three he's the only one that should really be insulted by that it was on his own but again you can't say like i don't care what future said he's directly responding to what J. j cole said why does everybody keep saying this he's directly responding to j cole j cole says the big three and he's saying, fuck the big three. It's just big me. He's not dissing Future because Future didn't say he he didn't come up with the term big three. That's what I'm saying, bro. But that's the end of the video. Y'all can uh, check him out. I'm going to uh, tag him in it. Yeah, man. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But still and all, I'm just saying... Metro get on there in these interviews and Future get on these interviews and they try to play so nonchalant about what happened in the battle. They don't really want to say, they don't really want to tell or put themselves out there. And I think that's for a reason. Not because they want to work with Drake in the future. I just think that they don't want to be, they don't, they don't want to be looked at as, as persons who, people who, persons, the people who started the, uh, the back and forth or whatever. I don't think they started it, but they don't want to look at it that way. And um, yeah, man. I don't know, man. We'll see what happens in 2025. This is coming rapidly. I got a uh um uh album of the year uh list coming up too, so I'm probably gonna release that um on uh December, the last day of December. I'm gonna wait all the way until the last day, because somebody might drop an album. I don't want to have to do it over. So look, <clears throat> y'all yourself a good morning, man. Thank y'all for being here with me. I really appreciate y'all stopping in, checking me out. You know, like y'all coming over my house. Like, hey, especially y'all beautiful, sexy, single lady. Hey. <laughs> I Y'all yourself a good afternoon, man. 12 o'clock show coming up. See y'all. Peace. Bye.